Hey y'all, check this out. Ukraine's F-16s just got a massive sniper upgrade. A single photograph just revealed something the Kremlin probably didn't want confirmed about Ukraine's F-16s. No, it wasn't a new missile. No, it wasn't some stealth paint scheme or exotic pylon loadout. It was something far smaller. A black coffin-shaped targeting pod tucked under the right intake. It's easy to miss unless you're me and you spend all your free time zooming in on fighter jets like a degenerate aviation gremlin. But that tiny detail changed everything because that pod isn't decorative. It's the sniper, the targeting system that unlocks laser-guided weapons, which means one thing. Ukraine's F-16s just graduated from missile and gun only platforms to precision drone hunters armed with guided rockets, cheap shots, surgical hits, zero mercy. And for Russian drones, well, let's just say the hunting season opened early and Ukraine brought the discount ammo. Hey friends, Wes O'Donnell here, veteran of the US Army Infantry with the 101st Airborne Division and veteran of the Air Force where we live in fame or go down in flame because and longtime fan of any weapon that turns Russian drones into flaming lawn decorations. Today, we're breaking down the moment Ukraine's F-16s quietly upgraded into drone killing platforms thanks to the sniper targeting pod and the LAU-131A rocket launcher that just appeared on one of their jets. This is a doctrinal shift in how Ukraine conducts air defense from the sky. On December 4th, the Telegram channel Avia OFN dropped a simple photo of a Ukrainian F-16. Now, at first glance, it looked like the usual aviation spotter candy. Clean jet, good lighting, nothing unusual. But when you study the underside of the fuselage, right where the intake curves down, you see it. A Sniper XP targeting pod manufactured by Lockheed Martin, mounted like a tactical flashlight on a very angry bird. This is the pod Ukraine wasn't supposed to have yet. This is the pod that tells NATO watchers, weapons engineers, and Russian Air Force officers exactly what changed last week. Then, when you look outboard on the wing stations, you see two LAU-131A seven-tube rocket pods, the same hardware American jets used earlier this year while swatting Houthi drones out of the sky. These are the launchers required to fire the 70mm rockets, which, when paired with the sniper pod, become laser-guided APKWS precision interceptors. Sniper plus LAU-131A isn't a maybe they're testing something loadout. It's the exact configuration needed for APKWS employment. It's the same setup seen on US F-16s, F-15Es, and Marine Corps UH-1Ys, and even Navy Super Hornets during counter drone missions. So the photo answers a question people have been debating for a couple of months now. Yes, Ukraine has the targeting infrastructure. Yes, Ukraine has the rocket pods. And yes, Ukraine's F-16s can now fire APKWS-2 rockets. No vague rumors, no diplomatic hints. A single photograph confirmed the arrival of one of the most cost-effective drone killers in modern air combat. And somewhere in Russia, a bureaucrat is updating the spreadsheet titled, Why Our Drones Keep Exploding. Here's where the photo stops being a fun spotter moment and becomes a strategic plot twist. Most people saw the LAU-131A rocket pods and jumped straight to the APKWS rockets. Fair enough, they're a big part of the story. But the real headline, in my opinion, isn't the launcher. It's the sniper pod quietly hanging under the intake like it owns the place. Because without that pod, those rockets are just dumb metal tubes with delusions of grandeur. Think about it like this. Without the sniper targeting pod, yes, you can still fire those rockets, but you have to point the entire plane at what you want to shoot at. Those rockets are dumb. The sniper pod makes them smart. Specifically, the XP variant Ukraine appears to have turns the F-16 from a jet with rockets into precision drone killer. This system handles every part of the kill chain the pilot doesn't have time to think about in a sky full of kamikaze drones. The pod gives Ukraine long-range visual ID. Drones that look like dots to the naked eye show up in crystal clear detail through the sniper's mid-wave 
infrared high def optical channels, automatic target tracking. Once the pilot designates a drone, Sniper babysits it. The system locks on, it tracks it through maneuvers, and it keeps the laser on target, even in turbulence. Now, these advanced precision kill weapon system rockets don't have seekers. They have laser detectors. So the sniper pod is the pointer telling the rocket, hit this thing right here. No pod, no guidance. No guidance, no intercept. Night and bad weather capability also. Russian drones don't take weekends off or respect sunrise. Sniper sees through the nonsense. The pod's thermal imager gives Ukraine 24-7 interception capability. And low-cost engagement options. Firing a Sidewinder at a $20,000 Iranian drone is like shooting a raccoon with a gold-plated bullet. Sniper enables cheap shots with seven rockets per pod. Suddenly, that F-16 becomes a flying bolt discount counter UAV system. This is the pivot point. This is where Ukraine's F-16s stop being new jets for air patrol and become force multiplying air defenders. The sniper pod isn't glamorous. It's not a missile. It doesn't explode, but it's the brain that makes the rockets smart. Okay, welcome to my workstation. Listen, let's connect the dots, okay? Here's the firing chain. Sniper pod finds the target. Could be a Shahed, could be a Lancet, could be a helicopter, whatever vehicle needs to die. Sniper paints it with a laser. The laser spot becomes a homing beacon. The pilot then launches the Hydra 70 rocket from the LAU-131A rocket pod. Mid-flight, the APKWS guidance in the rocket wakes up sees the laser reflection, and steers straight into the target. That's a guided missile for a fraction of the cost, and since each LAU-131A pod holds seven rockets, a single Ukrainian F-16 with two pods gets 14 precision interceptors. The U.S. recently flew a six-pod 42 rocket loadout. Ukraine could do the same if we get them the equipment. Here's why that's such a big deal. F-16s can kill drones cheaply. An AIM-120 missile is $400,000, an AIM-9X is $450,000, but an APKWS rocket is $27,000. This saves Ukraine money, saves precious missile stockpiles, and destroys drones in seconds. Also, fighters can engage drones without entering the danger zone, baby. SniperPod lets the F-16s identify and lace targets from long distances. The jet never has to get close. It can reach out and touch someone. Also, Ukraine gains the ability to absolutely shred drone swarms. One F-16 with 14 guided rockets can clean the sky faster than a Patriot battery officer can go and get his coffee. And it works for ground attack too. APKWS is a dual role weapon that doubles as a precision scalpel for ground targets. Once that laser is on the mark, that rocket doesn't care whether it's chasing a slow-moving drone or a technical or an artillery piece or an electronic warfare antenna peeking out behind a tree line. If it has coordinates or if a drone or JTAC can put a laser on it, APKWS is going to hit it. That's the beauty of the system. It fills the gap between too small for a hellfire and too stupid to waste a JDAM on. It lets Ukraine hit vehicles without burning expensive munitions. It lets them snipe artillery positions without risking counter-battery fire. And it lets them surgically remove EW sites, the very system Russia uses to jam Ukrainian drones and blind Ukrainian units. In other words, the same rocket that drops a drone out of the sky can also delete the launcher that fired it, the jammer protecting it, and the truck that drove it there. That's battlefield efficiency. Ukraine's F-16 fleet just got a toolbox, not a single tool. So where did Ukraine sniper pods come from? Well, sniper pods are already in service with Norway, Denmark, and the Netherlands. All three countries sent F-16 packages to Ukraine. All three countries have spare sniper pods. This explains why the first spotting happened now as jets undergo incremental upgrades. This is exactly how Ukraine operates. Quietly improve, quietly integrate, quietly reveal when the system is combat ready. Now reports indicate that Ukrainian F-16s have carried out more than 300 successful strikes since arriving. Adding APKWS turns every sortie into a multi-target mission. Take off, kill drones, hit ground targets on the way back, return home at jet speed. Russia is going to hate this. 
I mean, Russia hates a lot of things, but this is where the picture stops being about hardware and really becomes a window into the future of air combat over Ukraine. For decades, the doctrine was simple. Fighters chase fighters, missiles chase aircraft, and air defense batteries clean up whatever gets through. That doctrine died the moment Russia started flooding the battlefield with cheap shot heads built in basements and shipped to the front on pallets. Ukraine's answer wasn't to buy more expensive missiles, it was to rethink the kill chain. That's a doctrinal pivot in three big ways. First, cost parity finally flips. One F-16 sortie with 14 precision rockets can knock down drones for the price of a grocery run. That breaks the economic model Russia has been leaning on. You can't win a drone war when your drones get shot down for pocket change. Second, flexibility enters the chat. An F-16 with APKWS isn't tied to a fixed sector like ground-based air defense batteries. It can move, redirect, hunt, cover breakthroughs, sweep behind advancing armor, and turn drone defense into a mobile mission instead of a static one. Third, the pilot becomes a multi-domain operator. With sniper handling the tracking and the designation, the pilot can focus on flying, positioning, managing threats, and coordinating with ground units. The technology reduces cognitive load and increases lethality at the same time. This is the kind of adaptation wars usually take a decade to produce. Ukraine is doing it in months. And there's a lesson in that. Russia keeps trying to overwhelm Ukraine through volume. More drones, more glide bombs, more spam attacks designed to bleed the defenders dry, more bodies thrown into cities in the east. By the way, Russia has thrown 140,000 soldiers trying to take a town in eastern Ukraine. That's more than the British Army and the British Navy combined. And they still haven't taken it completely or decisively. Hats off to the Ukrainian defenders. But every time Moscow thinks it has found a winning formula, Ukraine rewrites those rules with something faster, with something cheaper, or with something smarter. Prometheus robots on the ground, naval drone swarms in the Black Sea, and now F-16s packing precision rockets guided by a pod small enough to miss if you blink. To me, this isn't just technological improvisation. It is a doctrinal evolution under fire that NATO could learn a lot from. And if this configuration gets scaled across Ukraine's F-16 fleet, which may already be happening, by the way, Russia's drone operators are about to discover the sky is no longer a permissive environment. The hunter just became the hunted. That's the shift. That's why the photo matters, and that's why Russia has one more thing to lose sleep over tonight. That's it for today, my friends. If you love watching Russian drones get deleted with budget-friendly Western ingenuity, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next upgrade Ukraine bolts onto something with wings. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.